Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Ming. Thanks for the opportunity to testify and share our views on the potential impacts on small business of the federal government's strategic sourcing initiatives. This is a matter of significant interest to our community given both the unique diversity of our membership base and the equally unique diversity of the services our members provide to the federal government. Our membership of over 360 companies is comprised of firms of all sizes, including approximately 25% that are classified as small businesses and an additional 25 or 30% that would be classified as small mid-tier firms. It's this diversity of function and size that provides the lens through which we view strategic sourcing and the full range of business policies we address with the Congress and the administration and how they will impact all or portions of the federal services sector. In our view, structured properly, the Federal Strategic Sourcing Initiative has the potential to deliver real benefits for federal agencies and taxpayers alike. As such, we commend the Office of Federal Procurement Policy for making strategic sourcing a priority. Yet while we fully support the FISI's intended objectives, we do have some concerns about its practical effects. And those concerns relate more to the way in which the term is used and understood rather than to the concept itself. So along those lines, I'd like to make a few overarching observations and conclude with four specific recommendations. First, we need to be clear that strategic sourcing is not one thing. It is a set of multi-layered, flexible procurement strategies that evolve and change depending on the nature and complexity of what is being bought. For pure commodities, where cost is the primary, even sole concern, strategic sourcing can be fairly simple. For more complex needs, particularly higher-end services, where quality and technical ability become more central to a decision, the challenges and complexities also grow substantially. For products where place of performance or production is irrelevant, strategic sourcing may mean one thing, whereas for services where the place of performance is highly relevant, the need to deliver services across multiple geographic regions can bring with it a different set of issues and challenges, especially for small business. These variations are not insignificant, and as the Government Accountability Office found in their recent report on strategic sourcing, are key elements of the way strategic sourcing is implemented in the private sector. Our concern is not that the senior leadership is unaware of these critical variations, in fact we believe they understand them very well, but that the front line, where we are seeing an increased commoditization of even the most complex needs, there are too many people who believe that the term really refers solely to an aggregation of buying for scale to drive down unit costs. Unless and until that frontline awareness and understanding is improved and enhanced, we do have concerns that FISI could generate a range of unintended consequences. Second, strategic sourcing raises a seminal question. Is our principal objective and responsibility to optimize government <coughs> operations, or is it to optimize those operations without impacting the current environment for small, small disadvantaged, home-zone, veteran-owned, or small, woman-owned businesses? For example, is it better to have fewer small businesses receiving a higher volume of work from the government, or a larger number of small businesses with smaller shares of the volume? Is it more important to perpetuate the long-standing tenet of fiscal acquisition in which broad, continuous, open competition is a primary goal? Or is it more important to seek optimization, which almost by definition would reduce the pool of suppliers of both products and services? These are far more than rhetorical questions. They and their disposition is essential to assessing the future of FISI. To their credit, the Office of Federal Procurement Policy and the Strategic Sourcing Leadership Council recognize this dichotomy and have worked hard to factor it into their planning but a much broader conversation is very much needed. These issues have also been prominent in the discussion about GSA's OASIS solicitation. Among the concerns that it has raised is that it will reduce the number of small business opportunities and that it is overly, if not principally, focused on driving down the unit cost of complex professional services, and less so on overall value, quality, and performance. Indeed, some GSA officials stated repeatedly in public forums that driving down unit cost was their principal goal. To GSA's credit, it has conducted extensive outreach to the private sector, and it does appear that they've taken to heart many of the comments they have received. But even as we await GSA's publication of the final OASIS solicitation and their explanation of how they reconciled competing policy and competitive interests, concern still exists as to how the competition and implementation of the awards will ultimately play out. With all of this in mind, let me just make four basic recommendations for the road forward. First, if, there, if I could define one desired outcome from this hearing, it would be to gain much more clarity on the question of whether the balance between the number of small business providers and the total dollars expended with small business is aligned with both the administration's and Congress's small business agenda. There is little doubt about the effectiveness of recent strategic sourcing for wireless services, laptops, and office supplies. Consensus on that alignment is essential to the effect of an expansion, efficient expansion of strategic sourcing, however far it may go. OFPP and the Strategic Sourcing Leadership Council recognize this dichotomy have worked hard to factor it into their planning, but as I said earlier, that conversation needs to be expanded. 
Second, we should develop and deploy requisite training tools to the workforce without delay and require that all acquisition personnel involved in any specific strategic sourcing effort for other than the most basic commodities first complete that training. Third, we should be highly judicious in the use of strategic sourcing for services, particularly for complex services. We should require senior level review of senior, significant strategic sourcing efforts for services to ensure that the strategies being employed are clearly articulated and are not overly focused on simply forcing down labor rates at the expense of overall quality. And finally, we should pursue a flexible rather than overly prescriptive strategic sourcing initiative. Let's allow individual agencies some degree of flexibility to pursue their own agency unique initiatives and to develop performance measures for both agency specific and government wide initiatives that will meaningfully inform the future shape, expansion, and or limitations of the Federal Strategic Sourcing Initiative. Mr. Chairman, Ms. Meng, the Federal Strategic Sourcing Initiative has great potential but also requires great potential but also requires careful attention. Absent answers to the questions above, it is frankly not possible to say with certainty what its impact on small business will be. The Office of Federal Procurement Policy, the SSLC, GSA, and others are to be congratulated for their relentless efforts to ensure that federal agencies buy smart and buy well. And we remain fully committed to working with them and with you and with individual agencies to ensure that we find the right balance and ensure the best possible performance on behalf of the taxpayer. Thank you once again for the opportunity to be here today and I certainly look forward to your questions. Thank you. Uh, uh, any members that have a written statement uh, may submit.